Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I got NHL legend Dennis Marook. Now this is going to be part two. Uh, I've already had an interview with him and it went great. I'm going to be asking him about the move from um, Oakland Seals to the Cleveland Barons when the team moved, how that experience was. And I'm going to ask him a little bit about the coaches he played for and see how it goes. Hi, Dennis. How are you? I'm great, Jack. Having a good, having a good year. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for coming on and talking to me on my channel. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so we had an interview uh, previous, and this is the part two. And I want to okay. ask you, uh, so when you guys moved from California in the NHL, was California Seals to Cleveland, were a lot of the players excited about the move? Well, I think the uh, that was my first year in the National Hockey League, so we didn't we didn't really uh, know till uh, uh, after the season was over that anything was going to happen because their Mel Swig, the uh, Swig family that owned the, uh, that uh, purchased the Seals, were trying to put a, a facility in in uh, San Francisco with uh, the mall on one side and uh, the hockey rink on the other side. But uh, that got voted against by Mayor Moscone in San Francisco, uh, voted down, and then they moved. And that's when we were, pretty much all of us, were in our summer homes are gone, and, and we didn't know anything about it. We just thought we were coming back to California. But uh, and next thing we know, that we're, uh, we're moving to Cleveland. So it's wow. kind of how a lot of those things happen happens. And, uh, you know, you got you're, you're still owned by that team, and you got to go. You got to go to uh, that that area. Yeah, were you guys embraced by the Cleveland fans? Was were they knowledgeable with hockey and everything? I think they were in, in some aspect, but I don't think for uh, for like to sell out the building and all that. No, no. we had a we had a twenty one thousand seat building in Richfield Coliseum, and That's it great. was like the Oz Castle, right? So uh, we we didn't get too many. I don't even think we ever got a solo. I think the most we had was thirteen thousand. I was against Montreal oh, man. in Cleveland. You know, so it wasn't. So is that your question? Is it, were they knowledgeable? I think they were in some way, but I don't think that we were not a, a great winning hockey team. And usually, a lot of fans will support your winning hockey team. And we were, you know, they had a they had a an American League team there yeah. for years. Where Johnny Bauer and a lot of good players played there, um, so that was a little different. They didn't need to have, they didn't get a lot of people for that. But they, um, uh, for the NHL, we just we didn't get a lot of a lot of people. No, uh, you were teammates with Dino Cicerelli. There was an incident that happened in Toronto with Luke Richardson. Do you recall that incident? I think that was a, like a like a spearing. He hit him over the head with a stick. Yes. Was that yes? Uh, I, Hard sport, you know those. Those are you know you just don't you know some the games are very intense game you know and you're 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 all up and then when there then, then when there's a lot of hitting and a lot of aggression going on then things can get a little little tense a little rough and uh, I think at that point you just you got to be able to control your your emotions and you know they stick that up pretty high and hit them in over the head and you just can't you know, you know thank God. Uh, Luke survived it, you know what I mean, and yeah. and uh, the more serious happened to him because uh, it could have been a lot worse um, for him, and then it could have been a lot worse for Dino. So you know those things happen in a, in a tough game. There's slashing during the time. There was more slashing and spearing and cross checking, yeah. uh, hitting someone and all that kind of stuff. The only thing they called pretty much a lot was if you did hit someone over the head or you're above the shoulder. Then you're of course penalized, and uh, other than that, it was kind of like a free game. Go, go play hard. Yeah. But that's what it was. It, like if, if the players today did what we did, uh, they'd be a lot of them would be charged. They're in jail. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's the way it was. I, totally different. Yeah, I don't know. He did go. He did have to go to jail, or no? Because I heard that something like that, but I wasn't sure. Because we're in no, California. No, I, I don't. I've called. It's been a few years ago. Uh, I don't think he w went to jail. Okay. I think he was fine. Yeah, I think he was just fine. Uh, did Luke Richardson do something to him that to upset him? 
Well, there's, I, I'm trying to recall exactly what I'd have to look back to it, but I do know that uh, when sticks get up a little too high, then, and I think that's what might have happened a hit or a crush or a slash. Dino didn't like it. And Dino's the type of guy that um, is all around the net. Yeah. Uh, you know, he scored goals. The reason why he scored a lot of goals is because he took a lot of abuse. Yeah. Um, that, and took a lot of abuse. There's guys that get hit in the games and stuff like that. But that man took a lot of abuse in front of the net, around the net, because because he had so good hands and he scored so many goals right there that they were trying to uh, uh, get him off the game or get him, you know, hurt or whatever. And I think at times he, he could just take so much. And yeah. I think that's what happened. He, he was, know, yeah. He was very intense. Oh, very, very intense player, no doubt about it. But, but he was, uh, you know, that's just the way he played. That's the way, because he, he wanted to score goals. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And he had a knee injury, and he didn't get drafted, but he still made it, which is amazing. At junior, and uh, uh, he uh, his thigh bone or whatever uh, had had surgery, and then uh, yeah, he didn't get drafted. But you know, at that time, he was able to speak to all the teams and uh, do whatever he wanted. And uh, Minnesota signed him. Wow. Yeah. Did that incident change things in the NHL? Like, did they give everybody a warning or uh, from the league? After that, well, I, I think there was a lot of incidents, not just that one mm-hmm. that Dino and Luke. I think there was other incidents throughout the league that it just got to the point where you know you're going to start injuring players, and it just they they have to stop that because you know you kind of you kind of hurting the game a little bit. You're taking away some of the uh, the I don't know what you call the, the fancy stuff or the nice. Highlight, you know, plays and reels like like Connor McDavid today or Nathan McKinnon, you know, yeah. if you start two hand and cross check and spear and those guys, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's why uh, I think a lot of things started to change um, yeah. regarding uh, not injuring the you know any player or even the top players and uh, suspensions were going to come in, a uh, game suspension, heavy fines. And that's what they started to do. And, and once that started to, you know, kind of calm things down and, you know, the fight still there, uh, uh, whether that'll ever, that'll change, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hit still there. It's not as much. Players don't hit as much today no. because they're afraid they're going to get a penalty. Yeah. And they don't want to do that. That's a negative thing for their team. And so... That's what's going on right now. The game is a very exciting, fast, uh, entertaining game. Very little hitting. You'll find the odd fight here or there. But other than that, yeah. Yeah. That's- Do you think uh, Connor McDavid will uh, stay as an oiler for the rest of his career? Well, uh, Gr- Wayne Gretzky never stayed in his, uh, did he? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that, that was just kind of a, an answer to your question because uh, one of the greatest players got traded, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, uh, I think that you never know. Uh, there was big talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs trade, Monitor or, or uh, Matthew, whatever, you know, there's talk yeah. about that. Or is it time for them to go somewhere else and Toronto make changes and get some good players back, you know? All that stuff, you never you never know. I would think that he would like to win a Stanley Cup there in Edmonton. Yeah, uh, He's been there a long time. Fans love him. He, and he's also said that he'd like to to win it with this group. They they need to make some changes, just like Toronto need to make some changes to better their team. They just didn't have enough compared to the teams that are playing in the, the last four teams that are playing now. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any superstars on those four teams. It looks like a a group effort from what I'm seeing. And uh, uh, it's, you could say that. Uh, um, uh, the, the Carolina team is uh, a mature team, and and uh, they got a lot of older guys, and then they've got this big team. Vegas is the same, pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. They're just, you know, Dallas is a big team. Uh, it come down to goaltending, and I and I think some of the you look at the goaltenders that that are in these these final the final four teams. Who are they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they're they're kind of making a name for themselves. You look at the. 
you know, all that. So, you know, auditor, all those guys that have, have not been in this kind of situation before, and now they're in. So yeah. we'll see what happens. I think goaltending is a big key. He's like your quarterback and your your pitcher and all that kind of stuff. If they go, the team goes. That's true. That's exactly right. And if, yeah, if you had to do things different, what would you do different? Meaning, in, in, a, in your hockey career, what would you have done different out there? Oh, anything. I, I think, uh, you know, as a dream, a child, the only thing that uh, I didn't get to do was, I mean, I had a lot of goals, a lot of points in the NHL. And I played in the World Championships with Team Canada uh, that's going on right now. I did that four or five times. Uh, so I got to play against some great, great European hockey players, Trek Jack and all those guys. Um, but not win the Stanley Cup. Um, that'll always be with me. Um, sure, I don't lose any sleep over it. Um, to be part of that or be a, as a player, uh, you know, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of players that have gone through their careers. And, and, and I think that's where I would have liked to have had an opportunity to to play with a team that could win the standing cup or win the standing cup and yeah. i thought when we were, i was with the north stars uh we had a good team but we had to play against the oilers yeah. and, and they were they were the top team there they they just had so much power that nobody could beat them their team of the 80s so yeah uh that, that that would be my only thing is try to get to and, you know, there's only 20 guys that can be on that team that can win the Stanley Cup. And, yep. and I think that's the, the only part. Would I do anything differently as a player? Um, no, I really couldn't because I, the way I played, I, I played an aggressive style, and it was very successful for me. Um, in today's game, if I was playing in today's game, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what player today would remind you of you? Johnny Goudreau. Good draw. Um, yeah, all, some of the smaller players, but all these guys were all were quick and, and good hands. And, and uh, you know, the only, my part of the game was a little different. I was more chippy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I like. Uh, I had to hit. I, I got hit a lot, so I I had to, I had I started hit, uh, hitting, mm -hmm. uh, learn how to hit properly, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, get with uh, against some big guys, so uh, I would say. You know, a guy like Johnny Goudreau and that, that that was pretty flashy, good with the puck, good shot, good playmaker. Uh, yeah, I would say I would be he'd be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, great choice. At the time you played, uh, who had the hardest shot that you saw? Oh, the hardest shot. Yeah. Oh, it had to be. Oh, geez, that's good. Good question. There's a bunch of them there. Uh, Reggie Leach, mm -hmm. um, uh, that played in Philadelphia, and Mike Bossy. Who played in uh, with the others? I would say those guys that were fastest, meaning not not the maybe the most a hundred miles an hour, but they were so good. They were so good with the shot. That that's why they scored goals. So I would I would have to say and there was a couple guys, you know, like I all for and the slash up. These guys were these guys were goal scorers. Mm -hmm. uh, Reggie Leeds uh, and uh, Mike Bossy. They just had a oh, yeah. phenomenal shot. Yeah, yeah, definitely agreed. Yeah. And uh, over year, over the years, did you keep any of your jerseys? You know, I if my my the opportunity to have jerseys. I have them, and we uh, we didn't. I didn't keep them. I I donated them. It was kind of like people say, "Why didn't you keep your jersey?" Well, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't one of those players that I, I did collect hockey sticks for my son. Um, uh -huh. uh, he must have worked five hundred to a million dollars worth of hockey sticks. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, because he got he got the Gretzky, Lemieux, Brett Hall, you name it. Greg <laughs> he got all autographed hockey sticks that were wood, Titans, and all that that uh, go a long way. You know, it's like having a Terry Sajak uh, autograph. You don't uh -huh. very rarely see that. You know, yeah. Um, you know, and I and I think that's where uh, that's what I did when. Um, I wasn't really concerned about uh, keep my jerseys for my for my son. Uh, you know, I thought he'd, he'd be a hockey player and he'd have his own 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 life and own uh, own stories. So uh, I just went ahead and donated a lot of them. That's I kept nice. a few of them. Uh -huh. Kept a few of them. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And you know, my channel's all about hockey sticks. So what's the oldest one do you have, or the most rarest player uh, stick that he's got? Yeah. 
Oh, geez. I would say uh, Phil Esposito. Oh, wow. Um, who else was there? Is another? Oh, yeah. Um, huh. How about Orr? I I, Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr? Bobby Orr? I don't think he has a Bobby Orr. No, I don't think he has Bobby Orr. No, uh, uh, Bobby Hall. Um, wow. Nikita. Wow. Uh, yeah, so he's got he's got some of those guys, you know. <laughs> That's so incredible. Know. Incredible. Yeah, it is. Got, got like a, and he's done nothing with him. He's got a, like the, the trap, when the teams go on the road, mm-hmm. they have a stick bag, right? No, yes. sticks go in there or more than one. Just massive size. He's got one of them up in his attic with them all. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. I told him to get him, him framed, and he just built a new house in uh, Chanhassen, Minnesota. I told him, probably, I got I got companies that will will uh, build frames and all that with a stick screw in, and they'll, they'll last a long life, lifetime. Yeah. So uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't really made a decision, but he will. You know, he's got two boys that play hockey. So. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. That'd be a great display piece for sure. Wow. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable <laughs> display. Unbelievable display, yeah. Yeah. He's even got kind of funny that someone in Minnesota, uh, uh, they were playing, my, my grandkids play a triple-A team, you know, 9 and 11, and uh, they called the Blades in, in Minnesota. And someone, one of the parents, was given a couple of my hockey sticks, and oh. uh, they gave it to him. Oh, how cool. I, it was one of the Canadian sticks that mm-hmm. I used when I played, and, and and I looked at that stick, and I go, "How did I score goals with that? It's so terrible, a terrible stick." Heavy, <laughs> but they're heavy compared to the one compared to the ones today. You know what I mean, and yeah. all that. Um, and I looked at the curve. I looked at like, boy, I must have pretty good hands to score like that many goals yeah. with that ugly stick, that terrible stick. But they loved it because they had my name on it. And all that, so they knew their grandpa played in the NHL and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And the, I remember you had a lot of tape on the handle. That's one thing that I remember that you put a lot of tape. Almost. Yeah, I know yeah. the NHL guys have that today, and it's kind of a rare thing. And uh-huh. um, tennis, when I when I played tennis, um, for a while because of my foot, but when I played tennis, I had put tape on my on my handle on the tennis racket. Hockey just like team. my hockey, <laughs> just like the hockey, exactly the same thing. People go, "How do you?" And and if you notice, and you watch tennis players, they have a thick grip. It's unreal. It gives them. Uh, it's almost like your putters, you know, that they got the thick grip on it now. Yeah. But that's kind of what, and and I don't know. I guess it was just kind of the. the few, I don't have big hands. I, I got a good strong handshake. And people go, "Boy, you got," but you don't have big hands. I just, they're just strong. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, my wrists are very strong. Yeah. So it's like leverage almost when you have a lot of ha- a thicker handle on the stick, yeah. more leverage, you know. Yeah. 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 And control. And, and control. control your rack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do the NHL All Star players, like All Star guys on teams, ever give out their secrets to their teammates, like the skills that they have, or do they keep it a secret? Anything like a shot or how to skate better? Uh, you're talking about your teammates? Yeah. 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 I think your teammate would help your teammate if he ask, comes and asks him, says, listen, how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, I used to teach kids, on that, and I still do, but I have because of my foot and all that. And I teach scoring. I mean, people say, well, you either you, can, you can't teach it. I say, oh, yes, you can. Um, you can teach it. Um, some kids will catch it faster than others. Uh, there's certain things, how you hold your stick how you snap your wrist, uh, when to and when not to. Um, and, and and a lot of kids today don't get the individual one-on-one fundamental teaching. Yeah. How to take a shot, how to take a slap shot, how to take a, a, a Sidney Crosby backhand snapshot, how to, how to do those. They don't get taught those things. They just see it and try it uh, on TV. They don't teach all that. All the coaches and certain all do is teach systems, yeah. power play, penalty kill, then their systems, and then become faster skaters with the puck. Yeah, but they don't teach how to. Well, next thing you know, he goes up and he then gets a junior, and a junior level, and he can't take a slap shot or he can't take a, a proper snapshot. 
that's what I think is what's wrong in the game today. Yeah. Not enough teach fundamental, on fundamentals. Fundamentals are important. That's what makes them play better in the future. Okay. You're kind of investing into the future. Ten years from now, learned, you're able to skate better and, you know, all that. Yeah. I, le- I learned a lot from goalies when I got to the bigger levels. Uh, I would ask the goalies, uh, you know, what do you do when, like, your own goalies play with and all that? What, what, what do you do when a good goal scorer is coming down? And what do, you, what do you do? And they would tell me what they would give them a corner or whatever. Well, in practice, well, I would be given a corner, but I wouldn't shoot there. I'd shoot where there was very little room. Wow. Oh, it was what three eyes of a puck to score. So I tried a lot of different things as a goal scorer. A lot of times it didn't work. A lot of times it did work. Yeah. So that's that's what I did. That's what I learned a lot. Become a better goal scorer. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing all that information. And uh, I wanted to ask you that you overcame a lot in your life. Is there any advice that you would give to people out there that maybe uh, anything? Uh, Regarding in, in what way, in sports, in life, or in what? In sports at, or life, in general, whatever you thought. Well, uh, I, you know, because of the way things happened to me, I mean, I had to deal with a lot of adversity and all that, I had to change a lot of things. But I think the most important thing is to, as a child, always respect your parents and tell them and thank them for what they do for you. Um, I think that's very important, goes a long way. Because when you're playing sports, someone has to pay for that sport. Someone has to drive you to that sport. And I think children have to understand how important it's not. It's not where your parents are supposed to do it. I think it's very important for a child to tell their parents that they love them and they thank them for what they're doing, taking them to games and all that kind of stuff, equipment and all that. I think that's one issue as a child. Uh, if the children are listening today. Um, and I think as you get in life, not everything's peaches and cream. I wrote a book and, uh, you know, I had some things in my book that are very personal um, that uh, maybe I didn't really want to write, but it, it, it was it was part of the book. Not, not everything's going to work out for you. You have to be able to, uh, and if you are struggling, and if you are having, uh, mental issues or mental problems and you know you you need to seek help you can't you can't take care of it on your own i went through it i know and and i i needed help and and probably the greatest help i had is the people that love you the most mm-hmm. is your family or your children or whatever so i think that's my my advice is growing going through life is um and, and, and work hard and have fun. Whatever sport you're doing, have fun. But you got to work hard in anything. Anything you want to, if you want to excel in something, in school or or whatever, and you're struggling and failing, you got to get help. You got to get help. And 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 a business and things aren't going well in your business. You got to you got to find out why it's not getting, why it's not doing well. So you know that's what you got to do. Yes. That's kind of my my kind of thing on life. And uh, you know I'm getting up there in age. I'm sixty. I'll be sixty eight. And uh, I, I tend to look at, well, now I'm into a bucket list. Now, I, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What do I want to travel to? You know, I look at, I've seen players that my age or even younger than I am are, are, are not living. Uh, they're, they're having, they're struggling. And I'm trying to stay healthy. I, I lost a, I lost a toe, uh, amputated my, my big right toe. Uh, and I've had, I'm still healing. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to lose anything more, any other parts of my body. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at, well, I want to enjoy life. I want to, you know, so I look at, uh, you know, I get to 75 and uh, that'd be great. If I go beyond that, that's awesome. Yes. Uh, I want to ask, what's the name of your book? If people want to buy it. Uh, yeah. The unforgettable story of hockey's forgotten 60 gold man. And where can they and, find it? It's in Amazon. Okay. Amazon, well, Amazon, Canada, and US, I think. And uh, yeah, it, uh, co-wrote was co-author was Ken Reed, mm-hmm. who uh, sports net with Avanca in Toronto. That's but, awesome. uh, he was my co- yep. so. It's a very it's a how do I say it? Um, people enjoy the book because it's totally different than any other document. It's not even a document; it's a story. Um, Things that went on in my life, good and bad, um, 
and, and all that. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, I read a lot of James Patterson books. He's my favorite author. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know James Patterson. Uh, no, but his book his books are uh, short chapters, and uh, they make after you read that chapter, you want to read the next chapter. You kind of dangles the teeth, and you want to. I want you you want you to read the next one and the next one and the next one. Well, that's what I did with with my book. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I did really want to do a book. I wanted to wait, but I ended up doing uh, you know a lot of push. But uh, I was sixty years old. I scored sixty goals, and I wanted sixty chapters. Yeah, you're only one of uh, twenty two players in the history of the game to score sixty or more goals in a season. Twenty four. I think it's twenty four now. Is it twenty four? Oh, went yeah. up. Two guys, two guys. Who were they? I think it was uh, McDavid and um, who was the other one? Uh, You're right, McDavid. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got me here, Dennis. <laughs> Pasternak. Pasternak. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's there right. Yeah. <laughs> There's twenty. Twenty-four, I believe. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I was the seventh player. Seventh player to do it. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank you so much for all the advice you've given out to the kids and uh, all the great stories. Really appreciate you coming on and talking Any, to me on my channel. Anytime, Jack. Anytime. You got it. Have a great day. Okay. Have right. a, enjoy the week. Okay, you, thanks. You too.